Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna give you some of my all-time favorite power user iPhone tips. The iPhone was released back in 2007, and since then they've released over 20 different models of iPhones. It's become one of the best-selling consumer electronic products of all time. They've released 14 different operating systems, and somehow everybody thinks that they have learned everything that they can learn about the iPhone. They think they're using their iPhone as efficiently and effectively as possible, but in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you some of the tips that I've been using for years that help me get more done in less time on my iPhone. The first tip I wanna talk about is called tap to top. And the tap to top function is really helpful. Have you ever found yourself on a website and you've scrolled all the way to the bottom of the website? You just keep scrolling and then at a certain point you realize you need to get back to the top. So how do you do it? Do you scroll and scroll and scroll in the opposite direction? Nope, there's an easier tip. If you tap your clock at the top of your screen, it jumps you all the way back up to the top of that page. It doesn't just work on websites though. You could be in your notes app and you could scroll all the way down to the bottom of that long note you've been writing. And when you want to get back to the top, it's easy. Just tap on the top like this and it pops you right back there. It even works in emails. Maybe you're in your email list and you've scrolled to the bottom of all of those messages. Tap to top and you're right at the top. But what if you're inside of a message and you've scrolled to the bottom of that message and you need to get to the top from there? No worries, same thing. Tap to top works in almost every application and it's one of the most effective and fastest ways to get back to the top of your list without worrying about it. That's how you use tap to top. The second tip we're gonna talk about is swiping to go back. Now here we are inside of this email. I'd like to go back to my mailboxes list. Most people will click on the back arrow that you see in the upper left corner of your screen like this. And that works fine, except did you know you can swipe from the left side of your screen to do the exact same thing? Why is that better? Well, that back arrow is like this big and the left side of your screen goes all the way down. So you can very easily just swipe by putting your thumb on the left side of your screen and swiping right like this. And you can go back until you don't see a back arrow anymore. This can work in settings if you're deep inside of a specific setting, like this one here, and you wanna go back. You can see that back arrow in the upper left corner, but don't click it, swipe just like this. It's much easier and you'll find that you won't have to readjust your grip or use two hands. Just swipe with your thumb from the left side of your screen over and you can immediately hit that back button without having to strain to hit it. It works in almost every app. Whenever you can see that back arrow, and there are times where it's very, very helpful, like when you're in the Messages app and you're in a specific conversation, but you need to switch to a different conversation. Just swipe and there you are on the prior screen. That's swiping to go back. Now let's go back into notes and I'll talk to you about another function that I really love. This has been around for quite a while, but it's been overlooked and it's changed a little bit in the latest operating system. When you're in a document and you're managing your text and you wanna move your cursor to a different place, there's a couple of different ways to do it. First, you can just tap and hope that you get to where you wanna to go to. Or you can double tap and you can highlight a particular word or you can click on the cursor itself and move it to exactly where you want to go. But the best way of all is to press and hold on your space bar like this. It turns your entire keyboard into a trackpad and then you can easily move your thumb around and you can get your cursor exactly where you want it to be easily without any fuss at all, just like that. Now, we're gonna talk about one of my personal pet peeves. One of the things that I see people do all the time, they're in a particular app, like right now we're in notes, and they wanna to go to another app like mail. So what they'll do is they'll swipe up from the bottom of their screen like this, and they get themselves on their home screen where then they click on mail. Or maybe they're a little bit better at using the multitasking screen. So they'll 
push the window up to the middle like this and scroll through the apps like this. But I'll bet you didn't know that you can actually use the bar at the bottom in order to swipe to the right or to the left to quickly switch between apps. This is really useful because in most cases, we're using the same couple of apps all day long. Rather than swiping up and looking for it every single time you want to go back to it, just swipe to the right and you can go app by app through the most frequently and most recently used applications. Now, one of the things that I hear all the time is how difficult it is to reorganize apps on our home screen. We're used to moving them one at a time, but we don't have to do that anymore. Now, this particular tip will take two hands, but it's worth it. First, let's move one app. There's two ways to do it. You can start by pressing and holding, and then it brings up a menu and you can click Edit Home Screen. But there's a faster way to do that. If you press and hold and just move it right away, you'll see that it quickly jumps you into editing mode. This is where you can easily delete apps or move them. But rather than moving them one at a time, while you're holding that app, use your other hand and tap on any other apps that you'd like to move at the same time. You'll notice they join the first one in a stack. And then with that stack, you can move the whole thing over to any other page and drop them all at once rather than doing it individually. That is a huge time saver when you're reorganizing your home screen or trying to clean things up. Now let's talk about how to quickly change your Bluetooth or Wi-Fi settings. Most people will do it the long way. They'll go into settings like this, and then they'll come up to the top and they'll click on Wi-Fi and they'll change it there, or they'll click on Bluetooth and they'll change it here. But did you know you can do all of that from the control panel? Simply drag down from the upper right corner of your screen so you get into your control center. From here, if you press in the top left quadrant where you have your networking tools, it'll expand outwards. Once it expands outwards, press and hold on the Bluetooth and you can immediately connect to any of your Bluetooth devices without having to go to settings. Or press and hold on your Wi-Fi and it will do a scan for what Wi-Fi signals are available and allow you to change it just like that. That's so much easier than going into settings. Now, for those of you that use mail all the time, have you ever wished there was an easy way to get to all of your pending drafts? Some people will go into mail and they'll go into their mailboxes and they'll come down and they'll look in one particular account's drafts and go through it one at a time, but you don't have to. If you press and hold on the new message icon on the bottom right, you will immediately get access to any of your previous drafts. So you can just pick up from where you left off without any headache whatsoever. One of the next tips, this is a problem I see all the time. So if you're one of those people who uses your multitasking bar to quit your apps one at a time, one at a time, one at a time like that, first off, you think you're saving battery. You're really not. Why aren't you saving battery? Because anything you close has to reload all of its resources the next time you open it. So you've been quitting all those apps and it hasn't really been saving you battery. In most cases, it's costing you battery. But the funny thing is, in Safari, we have all these tabs that we leave open. All of them are right here. They're all the tabs from all the windows you've opened over all this time. And you've probably never really closed those. Quitting the apps from the multitasking screen really doesn't help save battery. But you know what swallows a ton of battery? Safari and all of your open tabs, which are constantly pulling down resources even if you haven't looked at them in years. So you can click the little X at the left corner of any of these open tabs to close them. Or you can swipe from the right side to the left to close them. But what if you've got 100 of them or 200 of them? It's really easy to close all of them. All you have to do is press and hold on the tabs button here and you will get a screen that pops up that tells you how many tabs you've got and even gives you the ability to close all of them with one click. It's a huge time saver, but more than that, this will save your battery. If you want to close something to save battery, forget about closing those apps. Close these Safari tabs. They use more battery and most people don't need them at all. The next tip also has to do with Safari. And the next tip is how to add your tabs easily to bookmarks. So let's say you've come into your tabs and you've cleaned up and deleted all of the ones that you don't need. And now the ones that are left, you need 
but you don't want to leave them open because you want to save your battery. How do you easily save them? Well, it's very simple. If you click on the bookmarks button at the bottom of Safari like this, one of the options will allow you to add all open tabs directly to bookmarks. That's a huge time saver. The next one has to do with your text messaging. When you're inside the text messaging app and you're looking at the people that you're having conversations with, have you ever wanted to really quickly call someone? What's the easiest way to do it? A lot of people will either leave the text messaging app and go into their phone and go into contacts and find the person. Some people will click on the person's name and then they'll click at the top and then they'll click on I and then they'll click on info. It's like six steps and then they can call the person. But there's a much easier way. From the conversation screen of messages, go ahead and click on the circle that you see to the left of somebody's name. Sometimes it'll have a picture, sometimes it'll have initials, sometimes it'll be blank, but that circle is a quick jump into their address card. So by pressing and holding on it, you immediately get options to message them, to call them using all sorts of different services like WhatsApp or FaceTime or Line or other services like that. You can even do a quick FaceTime call from them or send them an email or send them some money using Apple Pay. All of that is done simply by pressing and holding on that little icon to the left like this. Super simple. I use that one all the time. And the last one I want to talk about today is one of the oldest tips in the book. And people keep saying there are easier, better ways to do it. But what I've found is, even though Apple has released several multi-touch gestures intended to make this easier, the way it was on the iPhone 1, the way it was when they first released the iPhone, is still the easiest and the best way, and it's one of my favorite tips. If you're inside of anything and you've made some sort of a change, I'm going to delete this word by accident, and you want to undo it. How do you undo? Think about your phone as if it was an Etch-a-Sketch and shake it. Give it a good hard shaking and you'll see it pops up and it says undo. And you can undo anything that you've recently done. I've used this all the time when I've accidentally deleted something or misspelled something or put something in the wrong place or when I've edited a photo and decided I didn't like the edit. It's super easy to do. No matter what it is that you change by accident, just shake it like an Etch-a-Sketch and then click Undo. That's my favorite. So that's our lesson for today. I hope you got a ton of value out of those quick power user tips. They're some of my favorites and I use them all the time, but we're really just scratching the surface here. There are so many amazing tools and tips on the iPhone and I'll be bringing you lots more videos in the future sharing more of my favorite tools and tips to help you get more done in less time with your iPhone. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it easily. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, well, now's your chance because we've gotten more tools, more tips, more lessons, and more tutorials coming to you every single week to help you make the most out of your Apple products. I'm Dylan Stewart. I'll see you next time.